Hello, in this video, I'm going to tell you all about Jersey Finger. Uh, so what is Jersey Finger? It is an avulsion of the flexor digitorum profundus tendon from the palmar distal phalange. So it's quite a mouthful, I will explain. An avulsion is any time we have a rupture and tear of a tendon off of its attachment site on the bone. Um, so with Jersey finger, it's this long tendon. We have these tendons in the palmar side of the hand that when they're attached to the muscle down here and when the muscle contracts, it pulls down and flexes the finger and also flexes the hand and the wrist. Um, so a uh, Jersey finger is where we have rupture all the way at that most distal attachment site. Um, so it tears right off of the bone, or it can be a rupture in the middle of the tendon, like we see in the picture here. Um, and so when that happens, it makes it so you no longer can flex that, that furthest phalange, the tip of the finger. Um, so signs and symptoms. So again, like I just said, inability to flex the distal phalange. So the, the bones that make up your fingers, those are phalanges. So when I say distal phalange, I mean that most distal bone, the bone all the way furthest on the tip of your finger. Um, so you might have total use of the rest of the finger. You might be able to flex the other joints, but you wouldn't have motion or ability to flex and control that last joint. Um, many patients, when this happens, they might hear or feel a pop at the time of the injury. Uh, it would cause immediate pain, swelling, bruising. Um, and if there's pain in the palm of the hand at the base of the finger, so let's say it's this finger, if there's pain down here at the base of the finger in the palm, that is not a good sign. That is a sign that it is likely to be a type 1 rupture, and I'll get into the different types in a minute. Uh, so how does this happen? Uh, this is where it gets its name, Jersey Finger, is because it most commonly happens when an athlete is trying to grab another athlete's jersey, like what we see in the picture here. Um, so the fingers are grabbing the jersey, so the fingers are pulling into flexion, but your opponent is pulling away and trying to extend your fingers so that you let go. So you're exerting a force to flex and an outside force is exerting a force to extend. And it's when you lose that battle that the tendon will rip off. And that's why it's called Jersey finger because it happens commonly in that scenario. You also see this kind of uh, injury like in rock climbers or anyone who is exerting a lot of force and flexion and where there's any other force, even if it's gravity, like in the case of rock climbing, if there's any other force that is working against your grip, then this injury could happen. Uh, it also, it doesn't have to be sports. It can happen just anytime whenever that is the situation that you're in. So severity, there are four types. Um, and now this is a little opposite of how we normally see the severity of different injuries graded. Usually one would be the best. And <laughs> as the numbers go higher, we have more severe worst cases, but it's the opposite here. Um, here, type one is the most severe. It includes a total retraction of the tendon into the palm. Uh, and in that case, the blood supply is severely compromised. So what we're saying is the rupture happened way up here. And in a type one, it pulls all the way down into the palm. And that's why pain down here can indicate that it might be a type one severity. Um, and when that happens, it's also damaging all the blood vessels that that feed that tendon and that muscle uh, all the way down. So it's it's a really pro big problem with the blood supply. Uh, type two is of moderate severity, so it's partial retraction of the tendon, but it doesn't retract past the proximal interphalangeal joint. Okay, if we look at our pictures here, the red, the blue, and the green are the phalanges. Um, up here, these are the distal interphalangeal joints, meaning the, the joints between our furthest two phalanges. Then the proximal interphalangeal joint is the joint between the closer of the two, or the closer two of our three phalanges that's here. So in a type two, we're saying that it doesn't retract past that point. So the tendon still remains pretty well intact up in the finger and the blood supply would remain pretty well intact. 
um, but it is no longer crossing that distal joint, so it can't move that most distal phalange. Then type three, uh, the avulsion, so the tear away from the bone includes a bony fragment, so it takes a chip of bone with it, um, and the tendon and the fragment do not retract past the mid portion of the middle phalange. So the middle phalanges are the blue ones. So we're saying that in this case, it took a little chip of bone with it, but at least it didn't retract all the way down to the palm. So at least the tendon is still located in the finger. Um, and then a type four, this is the most rare case, uh, but it includes a fracture like I just described. So it takes a little chip of bone with it and a tendon avulsion from the bony fragment. So that bone becomes separate from the tendon. So usually the tendon pulls the chip of bone and they stay attached to each other. In this case, it pulls the chip of bone and also detaches from the chip of bone. Um, and in this case, in a type four, the tendon might also retract all the way up to the palm, just like a type one. So type four is kind of like a type one, but a little bit worse because it also you also have a free chip of bone floating around. All right, treatment and healing. So initial care, you're gonna do usual first aid, rest, ice, compression, elevation. Uh, pain relievers might help. You might put it in a finger splint, uh, but ultimately this injury requires surgery to reattach the tendon and maybe repair the fracture if there was a, a chip of bone that came with it. Um, generally speaking, surgery needs to happen within 10 days for the best possible outcomes. Um, the, it, the surgery can happen later on. Sometimes people don't go to the doctor until this has been bothering them for a long time. Um, so it's not necessarily too late for surgery at that point, but you're going to expect a much better outcome the sooner the surgery occurs relative to the time of the injury. So within the first 10 days is optimal. The more severe the injury, so like a type 1 or a type 4, uh, the sooner surgery is going to be required for optimal outcomes. Um, then you know, normally after the surgery, patients can usually return to play or whatever their normal activity is after about eight to 12 weeks post-surgery, uh, but it will depend on how much of their function they recover and whether it's enough function for them to be able to get back into their usual position and whatever sport it was that they were playing. Um, and if it's a sport or a position where they do need to have a lot of grip, or like if it's a rock climber where grip is fundamental, uh, then they might have to wait even three or four months after surgery until it's really good and strong. Um, the thing about recovering from jersey finger is that you have to be very careful. And this is true of any avulsion injury. Anytime a tendon rips from a bone, um, during recovery after the surgery, the biggest problem is not producing too much force with that muscle because when the muscle activates and it produces force, if you do that to too great of an extent, it can actually rip the tendon right back off the bone and then you're back where you started again. Um, so with any avulsion injury, including Jersey finger, uh, part of the recovery is going to mean just completely not using that muscle and letting it heal and then just gradually reintroducing some activation and getting that muscle working again. So as it's healing, you are applying more and more force. Um, but that's something that you need to work out with your doctor and your physical therapist and, and be very cautious and very careful with that because too much force too soon will re-injure it and require a revision surgery. Um, now, sometimes people opt out of the surgery for this injury, um, but if that's the case, you will have a permanent inability to bend the fingertip because the tendon that bends it is no longer attached and it's not going to repair itself. Um, so if, if you don't, if you're okay with that, if you don't need to be able to bend the tip of your finger, um, then you could opt out of the surgery, but if it's a matter of athletic performance or you just want full use of your hand, then surgery is going to be required to accomplish that. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.